Hey coders, and welcome to episode two of our cache service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this episode, we're gonna be learning how to read and write to the cache. So our top six methods for today are get, get all, put, put all, remove, and finally remove all. So let's hop on in over to the code editor and see these methods in a demonstration. The purpose of a cache is to reduce the latency for certain data requests. And we're gonna show an example, a demonstration of that using a web app, right? We're gonna show the efficiency gains that you can have uh, using the cache service through a web app. And I'm gonna try to make this video uh, a little bit shorter just because I know a lot of my videos have been running long lately. So we're not going to go too, depth, too in depth into any of the code. Um, so without any further ado, let's take a look at our web app. Cool, so this is the web app that we that I have created and we're gonna be demoing today. It looks like uh, if we choose a region, uh, such as say like Iowa or any of these regions for that matter, then once we hit this button, get data, then it should return for us certain uh, data on vaccination numbers, such as the vaccines administered to date in this region, uh, the total vaccines administered in this region, and also the total fully vaccinated citizens uh, again, within this region. Cool. And also, it looks like it's going to return for us how long that uh, request took. And again, we don't need this uh, if this was like a production web app, but this is just going to make my point about how long these requests last to the database as well as to the cache. So this one took 10 seconds, and that is not a trivial amount. That's actually a very long request. You don't really want your user, right, your end user, to be having to wait 10 seconds for a certain, uh, for some data, right? Um, but let's actually, before we get too deep into the cache service, let's look at the code that makes this web app. So we're gonna go back into our code editor. And here again is our backend code. Again, we have our familiar do get function that basically allows us to host this, um, this web app right here on app script. So let's take a look at the HTML now. Now again, this is not really a web development course, so we're not gonna spend too much time on all of this HTML, but here's some uh, important tags right here. We have the select one, the select element um, for uh, whichever, you know, whichever region that we want to look at for the data. Uh, we also have the button, which says get data, and that has the ID of button. And then here is where we're going to be posting our uh, data or displaying our data, right? Uh, we have a bunch of glass cards. Each one of those has a certain metric for like today count, cumulative count, and also cumulative fully vaxxed count. Awesome, so now let's take a look at our CSS. Again, I'm just gonna be quickly scrolling through this uh, just so that we don't waste too much time. I am going to be posting this code on GitHub, however, if you want to take a closer look at it or even uh, clone it, right, and then run this web app in your own code editor. All right, so here is now the client side JavaScript. So let's take a closer look at this now. So it looks like once we click this button right here, that's gonna fire this callback function. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna get all of the uh, elements that have the class name of metric, right? And it's gonna loop through those for each of those nodes. We're just gonna get the first element child and then add uh, this class to that um, to that element, right? So again, this class, all that is is just the spinner, right? The, the little spinning graphic, right? If we try to do this again, then uh, that is the loading spinner. Cool. So um, then after we have that loading spinner, then we're gonna get the value, right, that, that the user wanted in their select uh, tag, in their select element, and then run this server-side function, get vaccination count by region, supplying that uh, region to the server-side function. All right, so let's take a look now at that server-side function, and here it is right here. So all that this function is doing right now is it's gonna be taking in that region, and then we're going to be accessing our backend database to get the data, right? So our, our backend database for this demonstration is just gonna be very fairly simple. It's just gonna be a spreadsheet, Google spreadsheet. So we're gonna access a spreadsheet app and then get the sheet called data and then get the data from that spreadsheet. So let's take a look at our backend data right now. 
All right, so here is that spreadsheet. The sheet name again is data. And it looks like we have tons and tons of data, right? We have tens of thousands of rows and it all contains uh, vaccination data on all of these different locations right here, right? So we have, it looks like administered daily, administered cumulative, um, and a bunch of other fields that we have access to. Awesome, so once again, we're gonna take in the region and then we're gonna basically loop through each of the rows of that spreadsheet and we're gonna see if the location column, if this location column, if the value in that location column equals our region. So for this one, this is Iowa, right? So it's going to equal that at row 15. Then we're just gonna get the data from that row, uh, this, the specific data that we need, such as like, again, cumulative, right? Administered daily, stuff like that. And then we're gonna store that in a variable called data and then we're going to break from this loop. After that, we're just gonna return that data as well as an additional piece of data that says, reading from the database took this amount of time, right? I also want to know how long this request to the database actually took. So we're just gonna say, you know, it took this amount of seconds. Cool, so again, we, we did another request to Iowa, right? If you recall, the first request took 10 seconds long. This one took about nine seconds. But if you recall, if you remember, um, this is actually the same exact data that was returned the first time. So um, basically, it seems like we are requesting the same exact data, uh, but every single time we're making a request to the database that lasts like nine seconds on average, right? So that's uh, it seems like there's a lot of redundant time and just like a lot of wasted time getting the same exact data um, from the database. And you definitely don't want your user to have to wait that long for the same exact data, right? So again, this is where a perfect opportunity for the cache service comes in. So let's now use a cache, or let's use a cache in our web application. All right, so we're gonna write again it in the server side. We're gonna uh, access a cache. Uh, before we access the cache, we need to actually put data in that cache, right? So at the very end, right before we return the data back to our client side code, right back to our end user, we're gonna to want to store that data in the cache. So before uh, we store the data, first again, we need a reference to the actual cache. So I'm gonna say uh, script cache is equal to cache service dot get script cache. Again, we're gonna be using the cache or the script scope for this demonstration because again, this data right here, the vaccination numbers, is very public data. Uh, it's, it's data that can be shared across anyone who accesses this web application, so it's not sensitive at all. So this is a perfect opportunity for the script cache. Cool, let me also just define data equals this. All right, so again, right before we return that data to the web app again, we're going to wanna put it into our cache. So the method to do that is script first get our script cache and then use this method dot put and that is going to store a key value pair into our cache cool so we need to choose a good key for this and my recommendation would be to actually just put the region as your key right uh, this is a great key to use anytime you want to get that data from that region you'll just look it up by the region all right and then the value is going to be the actual data itself but notice that this only accepts strings, right? So when this data goes in this cache, it's actually going to be stored not as an array, but as a string. So just keep that in mind for when we try to get the data again. All right, so just like that, we should, uh, by the end of this function, now put the data into our script cache. Cool, so that puts the data in the script cache, but how do we actually get the data back, right? Um, so to do that, we're gonna to wanna to get the data at the start of our function, right? Um, because we wanna first check to see if the data lives in the cache. If it doesn't, then we can get it from the, uh, the, from the database, right? We can do this long operation on the database, but um, first we wanna to check to see if the data is actually in the cache. All right, so instead of saying let data equals, you know, just an empty string now, uh, we're first gonna to check to see if the data lives in that cache, right? So to check, uh, um, you know, to get data from the cache, we use the method dot get. And this takes in one parameter and that is the key. Again, we put data underneath the key of region. So it makes sense to now get that data 
uh, on the region, right? So this could, be, again, be Alabama, could be Iowa, Indiana, any of those states. Uh, we're going to be getting that key. So if that, if that if data actually exists underneath that key, then it's going to return that data, right, as a string. If it doesn't, however, it's going to return null, right? So we need to check before we uh, return any data from the cache, we're going to need to check to see if that data exists, right? So we're going to say if data, and since null is a falsy value, if it is null, it'll just skip this code block and get the data from the actual database. Cool, so now we're going to say again, if we have that data, then let's just return it, right? So I'm going to come down here and just basically copy this just to save some time. And we're going to do an early return statement, right? So we have the data now from the cache and we're going to return it, except for we're going to say returning data from the cache. Cool. So we're going to need to do one simple thing on this data before we return it. Actually, if you recall, again, when we put data in the cache, we, st uh, we store it as a string. So we can't use the spread operator on a string. So we're going to first need to split that data uh, by a comma, right? So it should have been stored as a string separated by a lot of commas. So we're going to split that and turn it back into an array. And then to put it in this larger array, we're going to first spread out those values of this mini array. And then again, put it in that larger array with this additional element right here. Reading from the cache took this amount of seconds. All right, so let's uh, let's actually record how long that took. So I'm just going to quickly uh, I'll put some more variables into our script. I'm going to say, oops, not a cache script. I'm going to say cache start equals new date. And then I'm going to do one more for the cache end, just that we can learn how long uh, this takes to actually look up data from the cache. And we're going to see if there's any performance improvements. Because if you recall, the database operation took about nine seconds on average. Let's see how long the cache service, how long it takes to get data from the cache. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we have all of our methods. We're putting data into the, into the cache and we're trying to get it uh, from the cache. And if it does live in the cache, then we're going to return that data uh, back to the web app itself. All right, so let me refresh this to capture any of those changes. And let's try to get data again from, uh, let's try to get it from Kansas this time. So if I try to get data from Kansas again, there's no data currently in the cache. Um, so when it tries to get that, it's gonna return null. It's gonna break, uh, this is going to be if null, which is basically a falsely value. So it'll break out of that code block and then go down and get the data from the database. But then at the very end, before it returns it to us, it's going to put that data underneath the, uh, the Kansas key into our script cache. So let's take a look. There we go. Again, it took about 9.8 seconds. Uh, but here is the data from Kansas. Now, again, it put data in the cache. So now if we make another request for Kansas or say another user were to access this same exact web app and they wanted data from Kansas, they would just basically, you know, select Kansas and then hit this button, get data. I want you to pay close attention to see how fast this is. So I'm gonna hit get data, and then look at that. In half a second now, in half a second, it read data from the cache, and it's the same exact data, right? If we try it again, that time it only took 0.03, basically, seconds. If we try to get it again, Again, this all is only taking basically like half a second compared to nine seconds. So it's a lot faster. And this is definitely the type of latency that you would want if you had users come to your site, right? It's a lot faster. They don't have to wait like basically 10 seconds just to get their data. Um, and now data is stored underneath the cache. So as requests fill up, right, for like all of these different regions, uh, your cache is also going to fill up and now uh, as your cache gets bigger and bigger, then it will contain the data that it needs to have these quick uh, return times, just like that. Cool, so that is the cache. Uh, let's do it again one more time for Kentucky. There we go, it's 0.04 seconds, cool. So that's the cache. All right, so now let's look at some of the other methods that I want to show today. Um, actually, before we do that, I want to show one more thing, and that is the optional parameter of expiration in seconds. So cool, cool. So when you put data into the cache, remember the cache is a temporary database, right? So um, 
the data is only going to live there for I think like a maximum of yep six hours right so on on default I believe that is 10 minutes that it stays in the cache but you can actually change how long it's going to live in the cache from one second all the way to six hours right um, so if you only want it to like live in the database for or live in the cache for like 10 seconds you could specify that as an optional parameter right there and then after 10 seconds it will automatically remove itself and then it will no longer live in the cache so that is that last parameter right there cool so now let's look again at some of those other functions uh, basically if you got this right here if you got the get method and the put method uh, then all of these other ones should be fairly simple cool so quickly um, this 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 method right here put all basically it's kind of like put put uh, but now you can specify multiple uh, key value pairs that you want to put into the cache so if you had a lot of different key value pairs uh, that you want to put in all at once you can do so uh, using the method put all you just wrap it all in a object and then and then supply that to the method put all so again, you could maybe use this if you want to extend this web app to say, hey, choose your region, but you can select multiple regions. And that is when you would want to use this method put all. And then this, again, also has the optional parameter expiration in seconds. All right, so get all, just like put all. Uh, if you wanted to get multiple key value pairs, you just specify uh, all of the keys that you want to get and then put them in, a, an, in an array and then supply that array to the method get all. Uh, but this right here, this is removed. So you can also remove data from the cache. Again, remember, data in the cache gets removed automatically after a certain amount of seconds, right? But if you want to remove it early, you could by using this method remove, right? Um, and then you just supply it with a key. Similarly, if you want to remove multiple values all at once, you can just wrap them all in an array and then uh, pass that array to the remove all method. So let's run this function uh, just to... Uh, see what's happening. All right, so again, we first put all of these key value pairs in our script cache, and it looks like when we got them all and logged it to our logger, that returned for us an object that had all of the data that we wanted. Cool, so we also uh, were, were demonstrating remove, so we removed New Mexico, and if we tried to get New Mexico again, right, it was living in our cache, but we removed it. Uh, when we tried to get it, that would return null for us. And then finally, we removed the remaining two, uh, Texas and Oklahoma. And then we tried to get all of these values, uh, but none of them now exist in the cache because we removed them all. So that returned for us an empty object. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, this turned out a little bit long, but I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and post any questions down in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them, but I'll see you in the very next episode.